folks to planning phase syndicate this is another star wars unlimited deck tech today we are going to be doing a deck that i and jj have been playing around a little bit with it's a amazing type of deck it's great against aggro has a few weak sides but i'll tell you what for a deck that costs less than a hundred dollars this is easily handily one of the most competitive decks so what we wanted to do is bring you a tarkin cunning deck tech all right folks here we have the deck that i've been talking about a little bit um on the stream if you watch haven't watched our show we have a podcast that we run every sunday night at 9 p.m eastern uh called planning phase syndicate unlimited we are essentially doing unlimited content every sunday night but you're not here for that you're here for a deck tech about tarkin's golden trinity and yes, folks, I call it that because there is a card called Triple Dark Raid, which is just such an amazing card, especially in this deck. Now, this deck is something that's kind of come out of the woodwork. I did not invent this deck. This was something JJ actually brought to me and said, hey, here's a deck I've been playing. Um, I've been getting tons of wins on Carabast and all these other platforms. We should do a deck tech on this. So I sat down. I was like, all right, let me play the deck, put it together, took it to my locals, and only lost one game against... Um, against another former style of deck and thought, hey, I need to play this deck or need to talk about this deck. So I added a little bit of spice to it. This is gonna be our planning phase syndicate version of it. We will go through sideboard a little bit um, towards the end of the stream. And we will also be doing like a mulligan draw. But essentially this deck is three ISB agents, three tie LNs, three swoop downs, we have three no good to be dead. We have one out maneuver, three outlander ties, two scanning officers, three surprise strikes, three incinerator troopers, three snow troopers, three of the tie defenders. We have one sneak attack, two of the phase three dark trooper, three of the lurking tie phantom, three triple dark raids, three tie advanced, Never thought I'd say that in a list. We then had three out. Um, we then had three overwhelming barrages, two gladiators, two ATSTs, two of the reinforcement walker, and then one lonely assault cruiser. And you're kind of looking at this list, going, "Hey, what what is this list, right?" And so the idea behind this list is essentially you're taking and creating a couple of different um, win conditions. Tarkin's ability says, "Hey, for one resource." I can then essentially give an experience token to any one of these units that are on the board. And then some of these units have very unique, um, awesome interactions with each other. For example, the lurking TIE Phantom is one of the best things in the whole deck because of the fact that that cannot be killed except for other space units, as well as if it only has two life it can be killed by making an opening or luke if you kill something and luke's able to do a negative six to it you're also able to take it out by getting rid of its health and reducing it um but essentially this is the core part of this deck so the strategy <clears throat> as i mentioned earlier behind this deck is we have grand moth tarkin he's given an experience points he can also give two experience if you have the resources, be able to give two experience tokens when you flip them. He comes out on five resources. He's able to do an on attack, give another Imperial unit a token. Now, as you noticed earlier, essentially what we have here is a lot of Imperial units, almost all Imperial units, not quite all of them, but pretty close. And what we have is specifically designed to allow you to be able to buff your units and go either really hard to the base or be able to counter some of the aggressive aggro that we currently have coming, as well as allow yourself to not be completely foiled by control. So why don't we get into how we can play, play the deck? So the idea behind this deck is your turn one, you want to essentially get a one cost unit down if you can, that will allow you to basically be able to continue to ramp your units as you go forward. The best play is the ISB agent. Really, normally we would say, hey, this is not a really good card, but this card in and of itself is actually a pretty decent card in this deck because it comes in at a one three, you could play it for one resource. And as long as they aren't able to kill it that same turn, which usually turn one, they're not able to, 
then you can actually buff it up and give it a experience token on the same turn. It does make your turn one play a little bit slower, but it does allow for you to have a two four, which is a which is still pretty hard to kill even on turn two. You can also go space. You have a tie LN. Those fighters, again, normally you would say, I don't really want to play that. But again, for one cost, you can have a 2-1 or you can actually have a 3-2 in space. If you don't have initiative or, or have both these cards in your hands to begin with, you can actually just punt the initiative to the other player and let them put down whatever they have. If they're going to go ground, you can just immediately go into space and not have to worry about it as much. Um, alternative turn one plays that are really good is the scanning officer and incinerator trooper. And I say this because the incinerator trooper, especially if you have initiative, you play it down. You don't have the ability to give it an experience token, but it, because of how the incinerator trooper works, it does its damage essentially like a baby Han Solo does. And it does his damage first before the combat damage is dealt back. So if the other player puts a a, a, a drop down that's a 3-2, like a Viper Probe Droid, for example, uh, this incinerator would then be able to swing in immediately next turn and kill it and not leave the board. So it's a really, really, really good play. Your scanning officer, this is a, more of my style of play. Again, you can sub this out for another unit if you would like, but I like the scanning officer specifically because A, it comes in at a 2-3, which means next turn I can bump it to a 3-4, which is pretty good. Um, and it also allows me to be able to say, hey, did you resource? So, for example, if I'm playing against a Kira deck that I know is resourcing something or a Han deck or a Lando deck, I can pretty safely feel that I can play this card. Currently, we are in the beginning of the meta. There is not a meta where people are saying we're going to always include scanning officers. So if you're including scanning officer now at the beginning get go, you're going to be able to um get rid of people's resources easier. And a lot of times people are going to be putting resources down that they don't want, they want to be able to play later. Um, again, Hotshot Blaster in a yellow deck is amazing because you could s smuggle it out for three. It's basically like a, um, a little bit underpowered snapshot when it comes out because you essentially can play it and then immediately shoot somebody else and you don't even have to have a card in your hand. Um, Kylo... Yellow loves it as well. You can smuggle it. You can play it. So it, scanning officer, even on turn one, can be very helpful if you know that they are you choosing smuggle cards in their deck. Now we move on to turn two plays. And essentially this kind of, again, we got to understand the board state, but this Outlander Tie Vance is super awesome if you have another space unit, if you have another unit that can't be killed off right away. So if, you, if you've got initiative and you're like, they can't kill this other unit I have, I could play this Outlander, Thai, Vanguard, their opening, um, their, their power of the dark side doesn't work, their make an opening won't work, because you're going to essentially give an experience token to something that costs three or less. So this is super awesome, um, being able to buff up other ships. Your lurking Thai Phantom, if you know for a fact that they are not going to go space right away, you have the ability to play this vehicle, and this is the one that they have to go to space to kill. Um, if they're playing Vigilance and they have the make an opening, that can be a very sad turn if you play it and they play make an opening. Because they will play make an opening just to get rid of this unit. I will be honest and tell you that sometimes I will hold that card and actually keep it till turn three. But again, we'll get to that in just a second. Another amazing play is your 7th Fleet Defender because you could play it. They can attack into it and it can't die right away. So it's out there and then you're going to be able to buff it with Tarkin next turn. So essentially your turn two is, is what swing in with whatever you play down turn one. If you want, if you, if you have the outlander tie, you could add a second unit to the board, give the experience token. You can then give another experience token with Tarkin. So it kind of just depends on what board state your, your, the, the person you're playing against has. If they're aggro and they're not bothering to kill your units and they're actually just going straight into your base and you have an incinerator trooper on the ground, that, that card is just hands down amazing because you play a tie out the Vanguard. It'll buff it up. You still have one resource left. You can buff it up a third time with Tarkin, and now you have a 4-4 four, four that kills and doesn't die to anything with less. So even if they, they then have to now ambush something out that can do five damage, and that's, like, pretty good. Like, ECL is, is, can take care of it, but it's still a pretty good unit to play. And, and for the, the three resources, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so that's kind of how you want to play your turn two. 
Again, it just kind of depends on how they're playing, but these are kind of the cards you're looking for for your turn two. Now, we're going to move on to turn three. This is super dependent, right? This, this play, you got four resources. You could do all sorts of things. If you are all in space, which is usually the recommended path, is how can I get as many space units out as I can and not have to worry as much about the ground, you may have to do a little bit of control work on the ground. Your phase three dark, dark trooper is great for the ground. They get experience tokens if they can't be killed naturally. They also have the ability you can with Tarkin to still buff him in the same turn. You can play it. It becomes that. If they don't swing and kill it, boom, now it's a 4-4. Four, four. If they swing into it with something else and they don't actually kill it, it now gets a fifth experience. So the Phase 3 Dark Trooper is so good at being able to control that board. But if you don't have, if you don't have many, if they don't have many units or you've killed them all, you don't have to play it. You could either resource it, you can hold it into your hand. I like to keep that card as kind of like my backup insurance for when they play something really big and they don't have the ability to ECL out and ambush and kill something right away. Um, I will say that like the funniest play I've ever had is somebody used a, in a control deck, they, they did their super laser blast trooper. They ECL did it out and it, then it just buffed this unit and then had two damage on it. So it was now a four, four with two damage. And then I buffed it again with Tarkin. So it was a five, five with two, just two damage. And then by that, the next turn, I was able to bring Tarkin out and give it another experience token. And so it just kept that th stupid Sentinel thing just kept cascading. Um, surprise Strike is there if you um, need to rush damage. So if, if, if you're playing against an aggro deck and you didn't draw a triple Dark Raid um, or you don't have a lot of other units that you want to give experience tokens to because you're afraid your opponent's going to kill it, the Surprise Strike with the, the unit you have left is great because it can just like boom, attack in, and it's an extra three damage. Um, it's also really good if you have a phase three trooper and they did drop something big and you just want to kill it right away. Usually you're not getting into that. It's really only Baby Han that you'll kind of find um, that leader can bring out some bigger units. Um, by turn three, maybe if a, if, if a control deck is lucky, they've ramped pretty hard, but it's, it's still pretty somewhat unlikely for it. You also have Swoop Down. Swoop Down allows you to attack from the air onto the ground. It's a saboteur. It gives it saboteur. So basically, even if they play a space sentinel that turn, you can then use swoop down to attack you, the ground units that you're worried about either going into your base or ground units that you're worried about um, taking your phase trooper off the board. So both of those plays can be kind of key and, and niche. And, and the way that the, the, swoop down works is it gives it gives them if you attack the unit you get a plus two bonus to it and then on top of that it gives them a negative so i have 100 percent had a um my triple or not my my tie phantom out and i've played swoop down swung in for six and took zero back from it from it and it's just amazing because then it clears that board so you don't have to worry as much about them doing something to your unit you can then start buffing it your other option is to be able to pull a triple dark raid, right? So triple dark raid on turn three means you should have more resources, right? And it allows you to basically look at the top seven cards of your deck for a vehicle. Ironically enough, we run quite a few vehicles in this deck, so you probably don't have to worry too much about finding one. And um, we even have some ground uh, vehicles, such as an ATST, Pretty decent ground unit. Um, but really what it's meant for is if you don't have a tie advance in your hand, this is a great card because you get to play it for five less. And you, so you're paying three. You're getting your tie advance basically for free at that point. So it's one resource cheaper. And at the end of the turn, not only does it come in ready, you get to use its win played and you then get to pick it up. So they have to kill that. Even if you've got, if, if they've got a ship in space and you've got a tie phantom and all of a sudden you just buffed your tie phantom. So it's now a four, four because of the experience tokens. If they, can't kill the tie phantom or can't kill that tie advance immediately you now have like these extra units and because it comes in ready if they have something in, they have two ships in space somehow and they swing into your tie phantom i then will take my tie advance and kill whatever ship just swung into that tie phantom and because it took all that damage back from it so it's going to take four damage back if it's still alive and if they have two ships and let's just pretend one of them swings in and they they're waiting for the other one you could then turn around and just use that tie advance to kill immediately. The other thing that you can do is because it comes in at five less, right? You can play that gladiator ship if you could pull it. 
the reason we have those in there is so that it allows you to tell whatever you want to be saboteur. So if you're worried about, like, if you have a lurking type phantom in space, and all of a sudden, let's say they play a Millennium Falcon, you're like, crap, that thing can kill my my ship without dying. I then could play a triple dark raid and dig for that that gladiator, and then boom, I bring it to my hand, I put it down, and I say, oh, this is Sentinel. And because I get to say that unit is Sentinel, any other space cannot take my Lurking Tie Phantom off the board. That's how good that card is, is giving you the ability to play that on turn three, because you're essentially getting that five cost discount. Turn three means you should have four resources. So turn one, you get two resources, two, you have three, turn three, you have four. So being able to play that and call out what it is, unless they, again, unless they kill that thing, it's Sentinel for that phase. You then pick it up and you can't play it next turn because you won't have enough resources, but you then now have it in hand. So you have the ability to be able to play that at some point in the future, again, as a Sentinel. You can also pick the ATST um, if you need to be able to clear out a bunch of ground units. So again, if let's say they've got four ground units or if they're playing Sabine and you know that they're going to come in with something and you need to take off a Sentinel or do something else, this thing has overwhelmed. You're going to be able to get rid of it and pull it back to your hand. Not the best plays, but those are what we call in case poop happens. Um, uh, and then obviously you can sometimes pull another Tyler Gene Phantom. So that one's not always the best one to pull, but I do like pulling it, especially if I don't have one on the board. It's good to have. Um, and then if they don't have anything in space, I'm just picking it back up. Um, again, I sometimes will actually put it down, buff it, attack with it, pick it back up. It loses the experience token. That's okay, but then I have it again for the next turn. Now we kind of get into what I call turn four to six plays. And because this is a pretty decent aggro deck and not as much of a control deck, this it, your end game should be around turn six to turn seven. This deck is not built to have long longevity. Now, we do have a couple of cards on the sideboard that we'll talk about in a little bit, but right now this deck is not meant to have the longevity piece of it um, because of the fact that you're designed, right, specifically to be able to aggro the board. Now, what does that say? It says we have no good to me dead. We have the gladiators. We have snow, Imperial snow troopers. We have overwhelming barrage. Those are kind of what I would call like our mid game. So based on your board state is what you have to play. So if you're playing against something that um, is they're creating an Ultron um, turret or an Ultron Ray, which is now a new thing uh, to be able to build a big Ray um, or a big Mando. Sometimes people are trying to big, build big leaders and get a turn or two out of them to swing really hardcore. And this allows you to make that decision. So you're no good to be dead is only a two gross resource. You're also being able to bring Tarkin out. So you could have your units on the board. You could bring Tarkin out. You can then swing with Tarkin, give an experience token to somebody. You could no good to me dead one, their unit. If they're playing aggro and they have a lot of stuff onto the board, um, that, that snow trooper will allow you to essentially either um, swing with your space units faster so, or, and more aggressively, um, or it allow you to swing with your ground units to be able to control something that they have on the board. The Gladiator is used as a Sentinel. We already talked a little bit about that. Um, Gideon Flip Churn, the, the, the way I've been using it is if they have not been able to take my TIE Phantom down and they don't have a ship, a unit, or more than one unit on that side of the, the space arena, I actually will activate Tarkin's U or um, leader ability, give a token to that, flip Tarkin, attack with Tarkin, and then turn around and give it a second thing. That is a very important play, being able to get Tarkin's ability off twice in his flip turn. Whether you choose to do it on five or six resources is up to you, but being able to do that makes it very important for it. If your opponent is smart, they're probably not just going straight to your base unless they think they can out-aggro you. They're probably trying to take your units off the board. So sometimes it's you don't have more than one or two units, and hence No Good to Me Dead comes in play really well. Overwhelming Barrage is also a really good one, especially if you're... Um, your TIE Phantom is built up, or you have an incinerator trooper that hasn't died that's built up, um, that overwhelming barrage, and I don't know how much we really had to talk about it. If you've watched any of our other videos, you know what that does. If you've watched any videos from Star Wars Unlimited, you know what that does, because people love that card so much in Villain. Um, 
as we move into the end game, your end game is is really that walker or the ATST, right? The ATST is there, so it hits. It has seven health. It comes in at six resources. If Tarkin's out, Tarkin can, can buff it. It can then swing for seven, and it's got overwhelm. So it's got just a native overwhelm built in, which is hilarious because I believe this card was built for draft. I've used this card in draft for set one so much, um, but I've not used it a lot in premiere play but this is a great deck to kind of showcase some of these common uncommon type cards that you're collecting and you're like hey when do i get to play some of these cards i have um again the tie phantom right is is another end game thing if you get a couple of them out there you can buff them and i mean they're doing four to ten damage each it's just it becomes very very ugly i have played a couple of games where i've had a tie phantom that has literally swung in for 11 damage and all it had to do was two turns of 11 damage. They controlled the board outside of that unit. They were able to do a bunch of healing. And then, boom, here he comes in swinging for 11 damage. Boom, the second 11 damage. And then that next turn, I don't, I don't, I don't, I literally have the resources to play the walker. And the walker is there designed to help you dig and to heal. So if you need the heals, great. You can dig and throw the card away and heal. If you're like, nope, I need some other ammo because they've maybe discard cards from my hand, which pillage is a thing. Um, I may need that extra card, and that's kind of what that that reinforcement walker is there for. Hopefully, if you're getting to that churn, where you're going to have that churn seven, where you're going to be able to play this reinforcement walker, hopefully you got their base down and you're keeping up with them. Um, otherwise, it might once you start hitting that higher end where they're able to use um, some of their spa heavier space units and control decks, your your tie phantom is going to have a really hard time. Now that we've talked a little bit about this deck and kind of what your churn by churn plays are, let's talk a little bit about the weaknesses and the strengths. So the strengths of this deck is it's, it's a very aggro deck. This can be a very fast aggro deck, especially as you're building your units up and attacking with them. You're able to push a lot of space units. Um, there is a lot of yellow space units. Uh, there is also a lot of red space units, but I like the yellow ones better. But it's really this lurking Thai Phantom. That's, it's just that is the deck right there. That until they find a way around this card, that card is a, a menace card, which is going to force a lot of people to go to go to space, which then is going to open up other avenues for us to change our Tarkin deck to be a ground deck to go against some of that. Got to play that meta there. Um, this deck also has very versatile units, um, so your units can change. You can be a little bit more controlish if you need to be. Um, you can definitely fit into that mid range scenario bucket um it, it has such a lot of versatility you have the ability with the tools it i won't call this a toolbox deck because i don't genuinely think this is specifically a toolbox deck this is a very niche deck because it has that tie phantom and the in uh the incinerator troopers the best part about this whole deck though right outside of the fact that you, it's hard to kill those lurking tie phantoms is the fact that this is a budget deck you can play this for less than 100 bucks if you're just getting into the game and you're like chris how do i find a deck that i can play that doesn't require me to have a lot of legendaries or a lot of rares this is the deck for you folks this deck is competitive this deck is super fun to play and you can typically pick up most of the cards you need in this deck from your locals I believe the more most expensive card in this deck is the ones that come in the the phase three troopers and uh, something in our sideboard because those actually come in as um, what you would call uh, those actually come in as a starter pack that you have to buy if you want. I would recommend buying a starter pack, just me, but that's actually the largest cost to this deck. The um the rares that are in here are very cheap to purchase online. All of them are under two bucks right now. Currently, as uh the date this video is made in July of 2024, <laughs> that's currently what they cost. So as of right now, they're not very high, and you can purchase this deck, like I said, for well under a hundred dollars. Um, now some of the dis the disastrous things. Milling is very dangerous for this deck. I we don't have graveyard recursion. If they do somehow by chance get some of our tie advances or some of our lurking tie phantoms or our outlander ties and they get too many of those, it's going to be hard for us to build up a board state. Traitorous and Pelp. Any Pelp deck that can ramp can just steal your units. 
Most pelt decks are running traitorous. It feels like most green decks are now also running traitorous, at least in the sideboard. Um, and even I thought, personally, I actually thought with a lot of the upgrade control, you would be able to do, you, we wouldn't see traitorous that much, but it's still there. People are still doing it. This deck is very susceptible to traitorous. Um, with that being said, it does not have much um, upgrade hate. We don't have the ability outside of killing things, but if they're building a Megatron or an Ultron or whatever you want to call it on the other side of the board, the idea is, is you just start swooping in and swooping down on them, or you just start going to their base more aggro. So you could just start aggroing their base a lot faster, building it up. You could even flip Tarkin and let them waste a churn killing Tarkin. I've 100% done that, where I've flipped Tarkin, they will, have, start, they, they will swing in, let's say, with their um, Sabine, and they will actually attack Tarkin instead. Tarkin will swing, and he'll go right to base, and he'll give an experience token to the other side of the board, and then um, we'll swing in or we'll claim, and then they'll do the same thing, and I get at least one turn, and it saves me attacks because people don't want you to be able to swing with Tarkin and just keep buffing your units. They, they think that is actually worse, especially when they can't take care of the units on the other side. Um, we don't have ambush currently. That is a discussion that JJ and I had about timely um, intervention, right? Being able to put that in our side deck. I don't have that right now. Um, we also have no ramp, so we don't have a way of ramping any bigger. But again, it's an aggro deck, so your goal is not really to ramp as much with it. Let's talk about the magic sauce. We talked a little bit about this before, but this, Galact this triple dark raid is so important because if you get this off, you're giving two experience tokens to that TIE Phantom. So now it is a 4-4. You then swing with your TIE Advance. You're then picking your TIE Advance up if it doesn't die. Um, and then you're putting it back down again and re-enhancing. So now you have a 6-6 TIE Phantom that swings for 8, which is just so good. Um, building that ship up is really what this deck was built on. The idea behind it is to build this deck is to do your... Um, your ships and that's what this does um i cannot speak highly enough of of triple dark raid i've actually considered maybe putting strike true in this deck and getting away from all ground units but there's a few of those ground units that are just so good like they're just so good to be able to play um for it that it, it it's hard to get away from all of the ground units but there could be a discussion at a later point um where maybe we want to look at can we build an all space deck and give the middle finger to the ground. Um, but this is kind of, this is the magic sauce of this deck. This is what you're working towards, um, is being able to use that tie advance twice. It's even more important to be able to use that tie advance twice, especially if they can't take care of some of your units and they're not running in control because it's just allowing you to continue to buff and buff and buff and buff. Let's talk a little bit about my spice in the list. So I, I, I have a little bit of spice in the list and then I promise we will get to uh, our sideboard talk a little bit about our sideboard and then after our sideboard we'll talk and we'll run a couple of like opening hands and mulliganing these are the spice cards i threw it i'm actually running a 52 card deck i'm doing it on purpose because i have three cards i want in here so bad i want this assault cruiser in here because if it comes out on on eight resources it can help keep your space lane clear so if you've been struggling to do damage to their base or they've been like healing a bunch because they got Ray on the other side and Ray's just like, here, let me give a million experience tokens, everything. This thing can ambush in, it can kill something, and then it can take it as a resource until this unit dies. And then it's a 7-8. And you cannot buff it with Tarkin, obviously, but it does let you be able to go through and buff some of your smaller units and then use this as the fodder that goes into any of the units that challenge your um, your thing the outmaneuver is a, a card i threw it in there because if i'm running mostly space i want to be able to go and use it to exhaust ground units and so that's kind of what i i threw that in there i'm testing that that is my test card my other test card is sneak attack it's, just, it's like a fourth triple dark raid i have to have a card in hand so i can't go search for it but if i have sneak attack in hand and i have one of these other units like a tie advance it could do the exact same thing i could put it on the board the only difference is, is I don't get to reoccur it back to my hand afterwards, um, but I still get it when, when played. I don't know if I like Sneak Attack. I don't know if that's going to be part of the main deck in the long run, but I threw one of each of these cards in there to try to test them out to say, hey, can I run a 52-card deck and be successful? 
And the answer is so far, yes. Um, and then how often am I using these, these cards that I'm testing? Because I really genuinely think these at some point are going to be very, very big in the game. All right, let's talk a little bit about the sideboard. The sideboard is, is a little bit different, and this one I'm not super sold on. I've only tested this a little bit. I've left the sneak attack in there as a single extra event. Um, if I am running into something where I need to get units out on the board faster, um, for example, a snow trooper is a great unit to put on that board through sneak attack. I know you're not getting the full value out of it, but it is really, really good. Um, same way as if I need to sneak in like an ATST and use an ATST to be able to attack with. Um, and, and go down that same road um, where I'm using the overwhelm. I don't care if it dies. My goal is to just get something off the board, get it some damage in the base, um, and that's where a sneak attack can be really good. Waylay is really meant for a mirror match. Um, it's also meant if, you, if somebody's building a Voltron um, and you know you're going to go against something that's just heavily, heavily upgraded, you can take that card and throw it, throw it in there. Um, Gideon's Light Cruiser even though we don't have Gideon, is again just another larger spaceship that I have in the deck that allows you to kind of compete a little bit with um, control decks or if you have to go super aggro. I don't think that one's going to stay. Um, same with Relentless. I don't think our Relentless is going to stay in the long run of things. I think those cards are specifically there because I'm teching against control, uh, which is a little bit somewhat of a meta in this side of the state uh, or this part of the country i don't know like my area has either like ultra aggro or control <laughs> and so um i threw those in there because they're really good against control cards but i don't think in the long run they're probably going to make the curve cost curve cut because i should be winning before i even get to play them but i do have that in there in case i do have to go to a longer game where i know they're going to be a longer grindy game where they're just going to heal and if for some reason i get run into like a control game i'm able to get those because i'm i'll have nine resources because hard control is just going to try to stop me um from the win um bazine is in there 100 percent because of the fact that i want um i want to have a bazine in there to look at their hands i am very high on that card she also because she's a one three the next turn you can use her and she becomes a two four She's not as good as Scanning Officer, in my opinion, um, in this deck. That's why, hence, she's a sideboard. But essentially, she's there specifically to help us go, okay, if I need to strip cards from their hand, this is the cheapest and easiest way to do it. Clean hands, because I think really that's kind of where we want to be. Um, our very first draw. So if we, if we were to get this draw we would 100% mulligan the heck out of this draw. We definitely do not need five events and one unit I can't play. So this is a lot better of a hand. Um, this one, your, your turn one play is either you're going to use your sneak attack and bring something in you don't care about dying. Probably not the best play. What I would probably do here is I would resource um, that sneak attack because I don't have anything else to play with it, and I would resource one of these snow lieutenants. Um, it does feel bad because you're not getting that plus two buff, but it does give you a turn one play as well. Draw another hand. This is another hand. I actually would probably keep this hand. Um, I have an ATST that I can uh, put in the resource pile as well as one of the no good to me deads. If I'm playing against like something I don't care about, I know that they aren't going to have a bunch of units. I might actually get rid of both the no good me deads. Or if I'm playing against Han. <laughs> I'm probably keeping both of them so I can make sure Han can't flip and do Han shenanigans and make sure his Millennial Falcon doesn't do a whole lot in there. If we were to mull again, this is kind of what we're getting. This is an even better hand. This is probably one of the best hands you can get. I'm immediately resourcing um, the ISB officer, and then I'm probably resourcing the Snow Lieutenant or the Scanning Officer. So it kind of just depends, again, what they're playing um, for that turn, I'll draw two more cards. Now I got, see, I got a surprise strike and an incinerator trooper. Like, so if, if the first round I didn't need to worry about their resources, I'm probably getting rid of that, um, scanning officer is probably what I'm doing. And I would get rid of one of those ISB agents. And then my next turn, if I need to push damage, I'm playing that snow Lieutenant. Otherwise I'm running a surprise strike 
and resourcing that that lieutenant is probably what I'm doing. I draw two more. Uh, gives us a swoop down, which is what we need to be able to control that board if we're on the other side of the board. We don't have a lot this time on the other side unless we played that lurking Ty Phantom. If we did, then like that's also the ability for that to be able to take control. Um, outmaneuver would be as if it would probably be the card we would resource at that point. Draw two more. And now I've got a No Gets Me Dead and a Thai Phantom. I'm now at the point where I need the No Gets Me Dead to stop their leader if I don't have any of my opposing forces on that side. Um, or if I need to stop a space unit that could kill our Thai Phantom, that's kind of what I'm doing. Let's run another one. Uh, this one, this this hand I would probably keep as well. Um, I would I would I would in favor, I would probably get rid of the overwhelming barrage i don't want to do that but that's probably what i would do and i would probably get rid of this seventh fleet defender um or this tie advance again depending on what they they have i'm not happy i'm getting this tie advanced um but i would not mulligan this hand for the pure fact that i have swooped down i have my turn one play which is my tie fighter i'm going to be able to play it and and start killing things immediately and then look, there's our Thai Phantom, and there's an Incinerated Trooper. It gives us both options. So if they if they got if they decide to be a smart Alec and go to the sky to try because they know what you're going to play, boom! Now I've got an Incinerated Trooper. Last one um, that we'll do. This is this one's probably a pretty easy one too. I have a turn one play. I have a turn two play if I want. I have a surprise strike. I have uh, the overwhelming barrage, and one of the no good to me deads would be an easy an easy thing to go. Then I'm getting the, these tie advance and this reinforcement walker. Reinforcement walker, I got three of. Boom, that's that that's immediately gone. Um, and then I now I'm back into my snow lieutenants, my swoop downs. Um, that is how I would personally handle that type of a our mulligan and our draw. So I'm going to come back to this slide just for a quick second, and then we're going to wrap up because I think we've talked enough about this deck, and I'm excited for you all to go out and specifically play this deck. What I'm the reason I want to come back to this is because that triple dark raid is such a good card, and that lurking tie phantom is such a good card, and it's a good card because open or make an opening, Luke, anything that will reduce its health is the only thing outside of a physical unit that can kill it. So, for example, if they are if you're on like turn whatever, or they ramped into Avenger and they 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 swing into your base, and then they they call tie Avenger or the Ty Phantom, I apologize. If they call Ty Phantom, right, then you, you could just say, yep, I'll, I'll take it, and it doesn't, it doesn't do any damage to them, right? And uh, same with if they play um, uh, the card uh, Power of the Dark Side. You just pick the Ty Phantom. Um, it's just a simple, it's a very simple, it's an easy, it's just like, hey, if it, if it can't be killed by an enemy interaction, so for example, Vader, Vader pings, if they try and ping it, just be like, it's that's one damage you don't get to do. Um, same with Cad Bane. Cad Bane cannot hit this stupid thing. And you can literally choose every time when Cad Bane goes, oh, I got a ping. You're like, oh, I'm just going to stick it on my Thai Phantom. And they're going to be like, oh, okay, well, why is it not dead? And you're like, I, I, sorry, I, <laughs> I get to pick. It doesn't die because of your cards. So the Thai Phantom is just such a good thing. If you can get it built up and they don't have it, space units, again, you're rushing to time. You're an aggro deck. You're trying to crush them. That's how you're going to be able to do it. Thank you all so much for joining us for this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy this type of content, please leave us a comment. Please hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get a more, more followers so that we can get some recognition from FFG. We blink. We have some good decks. We hope you think we have good decks. And if you want to talk to us or be a part of our, our podcast, you're welcome to join our Discord. Or we're live on Twitch every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for you to listen to us. So with that being said, we will see you on the flippity flop.